Hi everyone and welcome once again to another episode of Does It Make a Difference? And this time we are talking about that very popular subject and the one that we're always watching, social media. Does social media make a difference? Now I'm fortunate to have with me Shaquille Steer from Keeping Up With The Socials and she's the perfect person to ask about this particular topic. So good afternoon to you. Hiya. Right, this is your area of expertise, so really you're going to say yes, I know, but does it really make a difference? Yes, it does make a huge difference. It's a way to get your business seen by people who probably won't see it if you're just out and about locally. So yeah, it definitely does make a difference. Right, well I've had people in talking about networking and other aspects of business marketing and social media is obviously a bit of a dark art really and it's definitely something more in your area than than mine certainly from experience wise so could you sort of give us an idea uh, perhaps of each particular type of media the TikToks the the uh, Facebooks and whatever do they have a specific different marketplace each one reaches yeah so each different platform I say to always use in your content strategy they all work differently. So you have LinkedIn, which can kind of be to target people in the industry, um, people that you know show what's going on in the business. That's the kind of, you're showing the company culture, that kind of thing. And then Instagram is where you nurture people, you nurture people who already know you. The way the algorithm works on there is your posts are shown to people who already follow you. So it's a great way to build relationships and to further build those relationships with people that are following you. And TikTok is just amazing for branching out, being discoverable by people who wouldn't usually discover you. The algorithm on there works on a for you basis. So it's pushed out to people that would have never usually found you. So it's a great way to be discovered on there as well. So is there a difference about how the algorithms work for each platform in the sense that, as you've just described with TikTok, is TikTok more aggressive with the way it gathers uh, your audience rather than YouTube, for example? Yeah, so the way that the TikTok al algorithm works is they push your content out to say, let's say 200 people. People like to call it the 200 view jail, which is essentially where your content's pushed out to 200 people and TikTok then decide whether the content is good based on how many people watched it all the way through, how many people engaged with it, that kind of thing. And a lot of people get stuck at 200 views because people haven't engaged with it and it kind of tells TikTok people aren't enjoying that content, so they won't push it out anymore. But TikTok 200 view jail doesn't actually exist. It's just that your content isn't very good. So what we say is, is to post content that you know is gonna get that engagement and get that reach in the first 200 views. And then they will essentially push it out to 200 more people and then 200 more people until those that engagement drops off. And that's how the algorithm works on there. Right, okay then. So it's then people like you that that put the message together in such a way that it's going to get past that magic 200. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a way that you can, you know, clip content and position content that can, maybe it's like the wording that you put on there or the first few seconds that you capture the audience in a way that whether it's going to be savable, shareable, whether people want to comment on it, like it, or whether it's just something that they're going to watch all the way through. And each piece of content has a different purpose in that sense. And that's what my job is to do is to make sure that we're catering to that, essentially. So so if you've got, um, I, I'm trying to think of some sort of business, say an engineering firm, something fairly straightforward, what is the way that you would get the message specifically catering for each platform? So it depends on what the business's goals are for social media, where it's brand awareness, where it's to build engagement, where it's to generate leads. But what I would say is again, to use each platform as a funnel. So, you know, LinkedIn will probably be used to show the company culture, show, you know, what's going on in the business. Any Like if you're uh, sponsoring a charity and things like that, just to show, you know, what's going on in the business in that sense. And then for TikTok, I would use that to show the day, the day to day. It needs to be shown in an interesting way. So, you know, people like ASMR, whether it's the actual like engineers out and about, is there a way that we could create the content that is engaging to other people so I don't know if you've seen the pool guy on TikTok he literally cleans pools right. and he has gone crazy people absolutely love him he gets millions of views all the time and he literally just cleans pools and now he gets to clean clean pools for celebrities like um Stacey Solomon and those kind of people so you can take something that is 
ordinarily not an interesting and make it interesting just by sh literally giving an insight into that industry, talking through it, voiceovers, things like that. Um, and so with Instagram, I would create probably higher quality content. It's still authentic. It's still raw in the sense that it's social media. People don't want a high, highly polished video, but you know, I like to say Instagram is like a Hollywood movie and TikTok is like a reality TV show. So that's the mm. the difference of level of content on there. So people do like to see it a bit higher quality, but they don't just want to see product shots. They don't just want to see, um, you know, what's on the website. They want more in depth and to feel that connection between the company. They want to feel like they're getting a behind the scenes shot of the business and feel like they have more of a relationship with the business, but the way that you position it on each platform is slightly different. Okay, so is there is there a place then for really high quality video at one end and f a, a video taken on the phone at the other? Are, does each each uh, va each one have a different value on a different social media platform? Yeah, and this one's quite a difficult question just because um, the way that social media is moving they are currently experimenting with that. So let's say TikTok, for example, um, we've known TikTok to be short form, raw content, straight from the iPhone, no editing, and that has worked mm. up until, well, it still is working, but it's it's been known to work. But now TikTok have, and well, they've recently released that they're uh, doing one minute plus videos, high quality landscape, which means, you know, it's kind of like this kind of format, you could post that on there over one minute and that's what they're pushing. So there is definitely a place for more high quality video on social and it'll be interesting to see whether the other platforms take that approach as well. So are you finding then that your clients initially struggle to grasp the characteristics of each platform? I think before they come to us, they have an idea of the platforms. I think a lot of people think that TikTok is just trending audio, you know, dance around to a little video and it's not that anymore. It's changed a lot from 2019, 2020. Um, people want stories, people want to feel connection to people. You know, we've gone through quite a few years of not being connected to people. And I think people are really craving that connection. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would say that a lot of people ha have a bit of a misunderstanding of TikTok especially. And also um, some people use Instagram kind of like they'd use their website in the sense that, you know, they just post product shots, those kind of static images. And that doesn't tend to work well because people are just, if you think about when you're scrolling on your Instagram feed, is that something that you're gonna scroll past or something that you're gonna engage with? And most of the time it isn't something that captures your attention and it's about capturing people's attention whilst they're just doing their daily scrolling, whilst mm. they're escaping from work or something like that. And it's about, yeah, really capturing their attention in those first few seconds that you've got. So, it, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of this. So if I've, there's a story about, I don't know, a project I'm working on, whatever, I have fallen into the habit because it's time as I look at it. So I've, I've, I've taken the time to do the project and I've finished it off and given the client or finished the, the, the way I want it to be. But then what I do is I just then paste the same thing on each social and uh, it, some gets more engagement than, than the others. But obviously that's a big mistake to make. But I suppose, do you find that people like me, for example, don't realize the investment of time, the quality of, of the result is a return on the investment of time that you, you spend on actually reformatting everything, repurposing it, I guess, and making it slightly different for each format. Yeah, 100%, because the way that people use each platform is so different. So even though, yes, it's the same kind of person, we go on each platform for different reasons. When I'm in the mood to like watch something that's probably a bit more in depth, I go on TikTok because videos are a lot longer on there now and you know, you hear people talking, things like that. When you want something that's easy digestible, I go onto Instagram and that's how people are using the apps as well. So with each platform, what I do is, is I have a overall content idea for, for my clients. So yeah, we'd have one content idea and then I will take that content idea and for each platform it's slightly different the way I upload it is slightly different. So it could be maybe a carousel post on Instagram, which has multiple images, 
let's say it's somebody in, in the events industry and they've got some high quality images of the event. Now that on its own will work quite fine for that particular client um, with a with a caption that is relevant to the to the post. But on TikTok, if we just post that carousel image, there's no context for people who don't know you. So what I do is, is I, I could take that same those same images, but there's a different way that I would word it on TikTok with text on screen, TikTok native language, things like POV, X, Y, Z, to get people to imagine themselves in that content. Um, so yeah, it's about ch adapting it for each piece, each each platform essentially. Right, okay. Now, the, the other thing that I've become aware of, uh, or I, I keep reading from people like yourself probably, is that uh, TikTok is actually a massive sales platform. Now, I know you can sell off each platform, um, but in your view, what is, is there a particular type of market that each platform services really well? Yeah, so I would say with like say Instagram, Instagram I wouldn't necessarily sell on the feed, I'd sell on stories and that's a, because that's a good way to connect with your community, engage with your community, it's a good way to be more raw and authentic, whereas if people are scrolling on their feed they probably don't really want to see, you know, buy this from me now it's it's a bit can be a bit off-putting it is okay every once in a while but I would I see a lot of a lot of progress with sales when it comes through stories and people can click directly through a link on Instagram stories again with TikTok shop you can sell products on TikTok shop um, people also do really well in selling services on TikTok as well because you're visually able to show your expertise your knowledge and that works really, really well on TikTok too. Um, also things, again, like going back to the ASMR, if you've got a product, people like to see the product being used. So whether it's like ASMR and you're like tapping the product to make it spark that emotion for somebody, but also, you know, showing the product in use, people really just like to see how is that product going to fit into my life instead of just talking about the benefits of a product and things like that. So it's about selling the emotion, selling how, that product is going to fit into somebody's everyday life and how it's going to benefit them. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you said the key word there. I think people of my generation think about features and benefits. And uh, I get the feeling the sort of social media generation, I think more about um, lifestyle and fitting in with their views on life, I guess, or, or the way they do things. The, but the one thing that that does trouble me slightly is that Obviously, particularly with the news generally that comes from America and stuff, there's a lot of anti-TikTok feeling uh, from a security point of view. What are, you, what are your views on that? Yeah, it's a bit of a difficult one to navigate because obviously the TikTok ban has gone through. Um, a lot of people are saying that the best thing to do is just to make sure that you are on other platforms too. So leverage other platforms, make sure you're building a community on other platforms, building out your email list, building out your YouTube channel, Instagram, and to not put all of your eggs into one basket. And I think that is so spot on. If you have all your eggs in one basket, essentially you are relying on that one platform for your sole income. And there are a lot of people on TikTok that do rely on TikTok for their sole income because the creator fund on there is very, very generous and you can earn a lot of money on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But I always say that your goal with social media is to go from a rented platform, which is social media, to your owned platform, which is your website, your mailing list, things like that. You're, that's what the goal is for everybody is to convert people to somewhere else. So you don't want the end goal to be social media. Social media is just used as the stepping stone. It's to be discoverable because even though without the social media, they won't get to the mailing list or the website. And so it is still so important, but the end goal isn't to keep them on social media. It's right. to it's to convert them to your website and then essentially for them to become a customer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I must admit, I've heard of various people over the years that unfortunately have fallen foul of some rule or other on YouTube and they've lost the YouTube channel. Yeah. And whatever, 50,000 uh, subscribers have just gone overnight. So so I am right in thinking then that you, you agree that really the database is the mailing list is the most important thing. So if the, if each one funneled people towards a mailing list and a landing page on your website or a, some sort of freebie that you're giving away, perhaps, that's a, a, another way of sort of getting people latched into your system. Yeah, definitely. It's important to have somewhere to lead people to. Um, but I guess without the social media and without that brand awareness, you're not going to get people to that. So it is 
essentially using it all as a funnel. So you have, you know, the social media is your brand awareness, your um, lead, your lead magnet as um, your conver- your like conversion piece. And then you have at the bottom where they end up becoming a customer. Right. OK, so so of all the different uh, platforms then or, or if you could list them, what where's the excitement at the moment? Oh, that's an interesting question. I think that there is a lot of talk at the moment around Instagram. There's a lot of new changes coming out and there's a lot of talk in the sense of um, Instagram are now going to be prioritizing people who pay for their membership, kind of going around the down the Twitter view, uh, Twitter route. So paying for the membership to get more reach, things like that. So there's a lot of talk around that at the moment. I don't know how well that's gonna go down with mm. users of Instagram. Um, TikTok is amazing for reach, for finding new people, for being discoverable. But again, with the um, the news with America, it's going to be very strange to navigate, but we'll see where that goes. And also I'd say LinkedIn is a really, really good one because the LinkedIn algorithm is really, really good. You can be discoverable by um, if somebody, if you're a second or third connection, your posts can show up on other people's feeds. Um, building a personal brand is a great way to um, be, see, be uh, build connections with people. And yeah, so I'd say it's crazy because all of the platforms work really, really well. And YouTube as well. YouTube um, are really working hard on boosting organic growth. So it's um, increasing on growth year on year. So you know how all the other social media platforms kind of have an up and down. YouTube is not going anywhere. So another one to invest in is long form content as well. Right, right. And and do you think the sort of Elon Musk palaver that's happened over the last two or three years since he's taken over Twitter has obviously it dipped in interest and there's been all sorts of um, objections to the blue tick or whatever it was. Is, 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 is Twitter coming back? Or it's, X? No, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody really knows what to call it anymore. I still call it Twitter, but I think that it's lost a bit of its identity in terms of they don't feel like they know who they are. So people don't mm. feel like they know who they are. I feel like you have to have a solid brand, know what your what your vision is, what your goal is. And I think at the moment they're in an experimental phase. I don't think it's dying, but I do think that people are using it for a different reason to what they used to. And I think that it's being more used for an entertainment purpose at the moment. There is still a lot of businesses doing really, really well on there. Mm. But I think it's really hard as a social media marketer to navigate a platform that doesn't know what they want either. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of one of those things where you just have to keep learning it every day as it goes with the new changes um, and just adapting to it really. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds interesting. I mean, one of the things that, that struck me straight away really is that my generation, we are slow to adapt to social media's changes. And as we were saying before we started this conversation, the changes are rapid and you guys are, are really got your finger on the pulse, but it must be hard even for you to keep up with the changes. Yeah, it's changing all the time. And what worked three months ago isn't necessarily gonna work anymore. If you'd have told me a year ago that long form content would have worked on TikTok and it was landscape and we know we had the black border around the content, I would have been like, no, that would, that would never work. But here we are today and that seems to be some of the best performing content. People are lapping it up, even though some people don't like to agree that it should be on TikTok. Um, but yeah, it's doing really, really well. I've seen a lot of success with that with my clients. And yeah, it's always changing, always adapting. And that's what I love most about it, actually, because it keeps me keeps me learning, keeps me finding out more and keeps me on my toes. It does, definitely keeps you on your toes. <laughs> yeah. OK, so final question then. Of all the things I could have asked you about social media, in your view, what I, what should I have asked you? Oh, Maybe are brands working on social media? Because there are is, there is a lot of talk at the moment that people only engage with personal profiles and um, building personal brands. There's somebody called Grace Beverly who owns quite a few companies, Tala, Shreddy, things like that. And she's got so big building her personal brand on TikTok and engaging with her community. And it's a lot of people are questioning whether there are, is a space for brands on social media without having a personal brand. Okay. And personally, I do think that there is, but you have to leverage it in a way that is 
quite personal. I'm a very big believer in every single band, whether you're B2B, B2C, every single brand is P2P, person to person. So when you're marketing your business, you need to remember that there is a human at the end of every single piece, every single post you put out there, every single piece of marketing you put out there. So when you are posting from a brand perspective, you need to be posting maybe a bit more personalized, maybe from a bit more of a personal view um, and just, yeah, just make the content more human. Well, there you go, folks. You've had it from Shaquilla, who's got her finger on the social media pulse. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. And there will be another Does It Make a Difference podcast coming very soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.